Are you ready, kids? Hello, everybody, and welcome to Subject High, the only podcast on the internet with the guests who do. do, 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 do. I'm your host for this episode and all episodes, Hookaloof, 24, a bear. And on this episode, our very special guest is a man near and dear to my heart and your earbuds. It's Huckleberry Blue, my editor and famous horse animator. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I felt so compelled to just quote Ruby, just, I'm in my room. <laughs> <laughs> and that episode has stuck with you I, it really has that was the one like like I, I i just i was like wow i've never done this before and so it just kind of stuck with me <laughs> i mean i i still have moments where i will i will i will quote ruby's little fading out yeah oh yeah just yeah, yeah. <laughs> just slowly fading into the background because yeah. it was genuinely hilarious it's so good i've had more fun doing those than i have in, in such a long time just because of like, I just really like taking these little nuances in the in the vocal performance that you and the guests give, like and just the fucking the move one where you just goes twenty, twelve, twelve, twelve. <laughs> I I listened to that. Uh, you sent me a sample of that at work, and I was dying in my seat, and I cannot tell you why. It's the so idea of a Scotsman echoing the word 12 was so hilarious, it's but so it was. fucking funny. Oh, God. I just, I love it. It's, it's, it, I like to, I like to think that it adds, like, a different layer of the podcast. And I'm, I'm kind of, th- like, doing, like, more of those, like, as you send them to me, I'll just, like, pick something to, like, just kind of work with. You're, like, not on, like, Emperor Palpatine pulling the strings <laughs> behind the, behind the curtain. Pay no attention to the little exactly. horse behind the curtain. Like I am, I am my own character in this podcast, whether you want me to or not. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is controlling the narrative. He steers. He writes the ship. I write the ship. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, shipmaster, shall we begin with a question? Uh, sure. You are like two different artists. Yes. Yes. What yes. I mean, what I mean by that is, you do music stuff. And you do art, art stuff. Yes, that is true. Uh, which one did you get started with when you were <coughs> getting into artistic endeavors? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I've drawn for like ever, and that's just kind of always been a thing. I, I want to say that I, I was animating before I was doing music um, because I got, like, I'd always been drawing, like, in notebooks, like, throughout high school, but um, I got really, really involved in uh, Flipnote Hatena when it was a thing, uh, which for those of you that are unaware, um, there was a, an app on the DSI called, uh, Flipnote Studio. And you could, it was basically just like a DSI version of Flipnote animations, um, where you just kind of doodle stuff down and then you make a move, but they had a whole thing like that you could connect to, um, called Hatena. And it was basically like their version of YouTube where you would kind of animate all sorts of malarkey and then just kind of throw it up onto the internet and people would reward you with stars instead of views which was super cool because if you really like something you could stay there for like an hour just like slamming stars into your favorite thing and a lot of people would um and then basically like the more you the more popular you got the more stars you accumulated they would translate to like green stars or blue stars or purple stars and that was basically stuff you could put towards more animation so it's kind of this really weird economy like based around these these stars um and then i kind of like that was for like where i really started animating i was in some animation classes in high school um and i learned the basics and i was able to kind of just shit out some stuff that got pretty popular i had i had uh like a little friend group on there with like some of the more prominent animators like shiny eevee um fubens king k22 like they were all just my homies and on there i was known as blue fox because I had a little blue fox character and that was kind of the whole thing so but secretly like stuff that I would never post um I was I was like like at the same time as that getting into vor stuff for the first time and so that was kind of what like like that that was happening completely separately but like at the same time so I was like doing vor animations on my DSI like really late at night and then it wasn't until like years later when the bronies came around that I started 
making music. Um, and I guess that kind of <laughs> answers the question. It was drawing and animating first, and then bronies in like 2011, 2012, and then music. All right. So bronies are were your gateway drug, so to speak. Oh, absolutely. Like, <laughs> just like bronies gave me so much. And it's so strange to say um, because I was always just kind of this closeted furry. And, you know, like my parents were like really like they're not like conservative, but they're very nosy. Um, and so I, I, I never like in my younger years, I was never really able to like align myself completely with furries just because it was like even my parents knew what was up. They were like, "Ooh, those are the weird animal people that, you know, fucking do sketchy shit. Um, <laughs> but but when bronies came around, there was no there was no stereotype for brony. You know, we just identified as people who enjoyed the show and met other people who enjoyed the show and then went and did cool stuff. So my parents didn't really have a stereotype for bronies. So bronies were okay. Bronies were cool, ironically enough. But no, those those dirty furries. <laughs> no, you can't. My, my son is not going to associate with them. Like, what? My boy? <laughs> my boy? Associating with fucking furries? Hell no. <laughs> my son's a Somebody brony. better not be the sound of a persona. <laughs> Up there. That better not be a set. You better be making ponies up there. I swear to God, you better be hearing hooves clapping. No, no fucking yeah. bullshit. It's hooves, Dad. It's hooves. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just fucking. I hear a little swishy tail up there. What the fuck are you I doing? I hear some, some swishy shit. God damn it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just, it's really weird to look back on because like now bronies fucking suck. So like. <laughs> <laughs> God damn! Just light them up, my <laughs> don't you? Just, I'm sorry, man. It's been a while. Like it's just like I'm. This is subject high, so we're like we're going no holds barred. We've had a lot of positive episodes, so I'm coming. Uh-oh. I'm coming to bring some heat. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate this that you've sort of that you've sort of taken it upon yourself to to you know wildly spin the the big old timey ship wheel that is connected to this podcast <laughs> and and move it from positive influence to your personal <laughs> subject. My, my my personal bitch. vendettas <laughs> like <laughs> No, no, that's fine. You know, no, 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 cool. no, no. Got... It's it's totally cool. Like I, I, because because I also came here to spread some positivity. I, like I, I really like this podcast, and I, I believe in this. This is such a fun time. Like I always have such a such like I, I listen to the podcast in their entirety while editing. It's not just a job. I really do enjoy what you're doing here. So, yeah. So the, the least the the least the last thing I could do is, is stifle is stifle your your righteous bitching. <laughs> my righteous bitching oh my god it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be super heavy it's just like i don't i don't even know how deep i'm gonna get with it but there's a couple stories like that like come to mind i i I would love if you would at now at this point now tell me one of those stories and then we'll probably circle back to one of the other ones later oh my god okay um shit now you're putting me on the spot now i'm like trying to think um yeah, you're talking all that good I shit. I know. I'm like, ago. I was talking all this smack. Um, I've had a okay. There is one that comes to mind, and this was probably the worst one. Oh um, boy. Y- yeah, it's like because this was back when I was like first getting into it. Like this was like where the beams did not cross. Like I, <laughs> this was back in the Skype days. Okay, so oh, like no, and this was when I was already like a becoming like a prominent musician within the Brony community. I was getting like DJ gigs at cons, um, and basically like you know, just kind of co- coming into my own, like as a musician and like making a name for myself IRL. But at the same time, I was also like just kind of operating within like the fat pony Skype groups, like the Vor Skype groups, like shit like that. Um, and what basically ended up happening was like, uh, there was this dude, I'm not going to name him because like, God forbid he ever like, you know, like, he's going to know. He's going to know this is him if he ever fucking watches this, but I don't know if he's going to. But anyways, um, there was this dude in, in, the, in the Skype rooms, and uh, he seemed, there was nothing, like, truly alarming about him. He did some art that I had seen on F.A., and, um, you know, he, I, I had seen it. I was like, whoa, this is really good. Um, I really like this guy's stuff. Um, but, like, and so I kind of, like, I, I kind of started talking to him, and, like, I didn't have like my location turned on for Skype, but he did. And, you know, I saw it was like from like the, the same thing. 
Oh. And yeah, and I was like, I was just kind of starting to get to know him. And like, I, I saw it was from in California. And I was like, oh, holy shit, what the fuck? Like, oh shit, you're from Harlem here too? Yeah, exactly. And so I was kind of like, oh wow, like, yeah, I, I live not too far from there. Like, unknowingly, like, I live like very close to there. Like, I, but I didn't want to let that on yet. I just kind of was curious. And he's like, yeah, like, I'm from here. I'm from here. And I'm like, wait, you're from here? there and he's like yeah i live off of so-and-so street and i in my head i'm like freaking out i'm like oh my god i live on off of so-and-so street what and like i i kind of was like and i i kind of wanted to push a little further just like look even further like (laughs) i wanted to look directly at the sun basically and so i was like oh i go down there a lot i have a really close friend that lives there uh, where exactly? Like, what what street are you off of? Like, I always visit some 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 way. And he's like, Oh my gosh, I live off of this 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 way. And I flipped out because this dude like lived across, like, he didn't live across the street, but like, like there's like a neighborhood on one side of the major street and then a neighborhood on the other side of the major street. We were like that close. Like Jeez. we shared fucking zip codes house numbers kind of close (laughs) and i was like oh my god no way but i still wanted to get to know him i really wasn't like and i was like yeah like i live like two cities over from him you know then and like i kind of just made some excuse just to like kind of you know push him like push him away kind of um unbeknownst to me that was close enough to where he fucking completely like he would just unhinge at me come like 2 a.m like every like every other night like where he would be like i really need to talk to somebody i really need to hang out irl i need a hug like i need you know just something you know Uh, like i need i need some sort of physical connection with somebody are you available can you come down and see me you are my only friend like kind of shit and i'm like at this point i'm like dude like I literally just met you like a week ago. This is heavy, you know, and I'm never one to like, I'm not heartless, you know, I'm not like, I like, I felt for the dude. Like I know where he's been and what that feels like, but like this ain't it chief, you know? Mm -hmm. And it freaked me out because he was like, in his mind, I'm like two cities over, but in my mind I'm freaking out because he's literally in that next neighborhood, just like freaking out, you know? And I'm like, and meanwhile, by the way, I have a job at the fucking grocery store, like down the street from both of us. Oh, so no. I'm like freaking out and like, and then he had pictures on his FA of him and I would see him at the grocery store. <laughs> he came in like <laughs> twice and he had no idea it was me at the time because like I didn't go meet him yet. Like, yeah, so that's a, that's a thing. We'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. So I, he didn't know it was me yet, but um, I, I remember seeing him and going like, oh my God, like if you, if only you knew. Um, and it wasn't until like maybe like a couple months to a year later, uh, he seemed like he had chilled out. He seemed like a cool dude and he apologized and I apologized as well. And he, you know, he was like, hey man, do you want to meet up? Do you want to like try to like, you know, get something to, to eat or something? And I, he caught me on a really good day and I'm like, sure, like I, you know, I can come by like after work or something. And so I kind of went home and I like, changed out of my grocery store outfit and then went and picked him up. And he was like decently cool until like the very end of the like the trip it was basically just like yeah it was basically just like me like kind of listening to his story he's kind of still living with his parents he had a bachelor's degree that he was doing absolute bupchi with like nothing and i'm like dude like you have a bachelor's degree i wish i had that go get a job what are you doing like and because like he was like i don't want to like completely out this dude but like basically he had a bachelor's degree uh in a in a place where it was like like it, it was a degree in something you could get a job in. It's like you can do things with that. Like go right. just 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 apply yourself a little bit. You know, put some put some feet on the ground and you'll be fine. You know, but he just was really having problems taking that initiative because you know he was obviously going through some stuff. So understandable, but still, I was just trying to kind of give him that you know pushback. And it wasn't until like we got in the car to go home that he would kind of just like 
like he kind of like started like letting me in on like a little like more of like what kind of person he was and he's like yeah like a lot of my friends don't like being friends with me because i'm just kind of one of those dudes that don't give a shit you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying i'm like uh no i don't know what you're saying sir what the fuck are you talking about (laughs) what what are you saying yeah and he's like yeah man you know i'm kind of the type of dude like i remember i was hanging out with these one homies right and like i just kind of pulled my pants down the middle of the street and took a shit (laughs) and then i danced around it <laughs> this <laughs> I I know three in- pieces of information about this person now. Piece of information number one, bachelor's degree. Piece of information number two, lonely. Piece of information number three, street shit dancing. <laughs> And it just it caught me off guard because like this dude was nothing like he was online. He was a really cool dude. Um, you know, like even like we had even talked about it and I basically like told him, I was like, yeah, dude, like and then I kinda let him in. I was like, yeah, I got this whole like side thing, like I got this IRL thing, this whole pony vor thing. This really isn't who I subscribe to in real life. Like this is kind of a separate thing. I enjoy this, but I also acknowledge that this isn't something that like I can demand society except of me, you know, just outright. Mm. Like I'm not going to lead with this. Like I'll let you in. This is me now. Exactly. This is who I am. Like I would always fucking hear it from like Skype people, like in the pony rooms, like furry rooms, like most of the people are pretty chill. Like you'd have like the one dude that's like a total weird ass, but like, you know, whatever. You, there's always one. But, like, it always kind of seems like in the brony rooms, there would always kind of be this collection of, like, dudes who really were just kind of a little unhinged. And it was just going completely unchecked because their whole love and tolerate BS, you know? And so it's just like, they're kind of just over there operating with whatever the fuck they want. And nobody's really kind of going to, like, you know, check that shit. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this dude, like, like this dude kind of went off the rails, just kind of going back to the story. This dude kind of went off the rails in the car and I was like, ah, uh-huh, cool. All right, sweet. And then like, we, I kind of dropped him off at his house. We dabbed it up and then he went inside and I really didn't see him at all, all that much. I basically just kind of kept making excuses of why I wasn't free to meet up. Like, you know, I told him I moved away. Um, you know, just kind of give him, get him off of my tail. But then, like, because he had known about my music alias now, like, I played a couple gigs, a couple more gigs in California under my, you know, brony music alias that he actually ended up coming to and trying to apologize. And oh. I kind of was like, yeah, like, no, absolutely. Which I kind of appreciated. I'm like, okay, you are not here to ruin my life. And, like, out me and be like, hey, Blue is actually this dude. This dude makes fucking Vore, dude. Like, can we like arrest him? You know, like he, he, wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't, he wasn't there to do that, which I appreciated. And I, I, I thanked him for that. And he understood. And he, he, he really was just still kind of like, I guess like he did feel really bad about the interaction. And, you know, I told him like, no, you know, honestly, like, you know, it, it really was just a really hard time in my life. Like for making friends, like I was really busy. I was doing the music thing. I was trying to make college happen. Like, you know, like this dude was not super bad. It was nowhere near as bad as it could have been. Let me put it that way. But you know, it really was just kind of like, a, okay, let me defuse the situation. This was a mistake. I don't want to lead this guy on thinking that I'm now going to be his best friend for life, which is basically yeah. what he was looking for. So yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was probably the fucking wildest it's ever gotten yeah. for me. I mean, tr- you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's all fun to meet up, you meet up with your friends in real life, you know? Yeah. Got the, those have been some of my favorite experiences in the furry fandom. And, you know, if you make good friends with a person, you can, it can really change your life. You Absolutely. Can move down to the swamps. <laughs> <laughs> move just, down, just yeah. <laughs> move down to the swamps uh, by uh, what are the what are they called? A fucking pond skimmer or like the what you what you use to go on the Everglades? <laughs> oh, you mean like a little cigarette boat? No, you, oh, yeah, it's it like was, the airboat. Yeah, the airboat. The, that yeah. shit. I'm, I'm, you know, I, yeah. I don't have my airboat yet, which means that I'm still stranded. But one day I will <laughs> use my all my vor dollars to buy a, an airboat, and I will free myself. <laughs> Get them vor from bucks. The Go buy a gator cart. Yeah, this is the airboat that vor built. <laughs> We're gonna go. What is, what is it called? You need to go and catch catfish with your hands, like noodling. Well, yeah, just go noodling with the oh, boat that Vor built. I don't want to go noodling. Like, go noodling, bro. What the fuck are you doing? Uh, you. <laughs> I don't think anybody who goes noodling would say bro, but you've provided me this interesting sort of perspective of like valley valley dude redneck. 
Valley dude redneck. Yeah, yeah dude. We're going down to the south <laughs> where we're going to do some noodling, bro. Yeah, dude. We're going to go noodling, bro. What are you doing, man? Get your fucking <laughs> board. Let's get some noodles, bro. <laughs> Let's get some gnarly nudes. <laughs> I've got Chaz, and he's bringing some of his dad's natty eyes. <laughs> Dude, we got that natty light, bro. His dad bought it for him. He's not even 18, bro. Fuck. I brought some of my mom's wine coolers, and we're going to just sort of go out and catch catfish with our bare hands. <laughs> and then the, the, the dude who's not local is like, good lord, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> he's been kidnapped. <laughs> he's been kidnapped. <laughs> Like, yeah, we, ha- we picked up this homeless dude. <laughs> We're going to use him as bait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is sort of off topic, but did you see there was... This is, this is off topic and doesn't go anywhere, so we're going to make this a reoccurring segment, which I say a lot and then I never do. Oh my it's God. called... Uh, it's a new reoccurring segment that will not reoccur called Hookaloo Fred a News Story. Okay. And on this first and last entry of Hookaloo Fred a News Story, I saw a fucking news story about a catfish that, like, a 415-pound catfish that ate a Nazi. Yo, hot. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's not what I expected. That's fucking crazy. What the hell? Like, what, yeah, like somebody caught someone caught this big ass catfish, and when they gutted it, they found an old SS officer's pin inside what? this. Catfish. Okay, I was gonna say, like, number one, how'd you know the guy was a Nazi? Okay, did this fucking catfish burp up the fucking like armband? Like, what yeah, the, the hell? Hat. The little hat. <laughs> like, no. what the fuck, dude? Oh, that's no. awesome. I love that. But like a whole a whole ass Nazi. God damn. I mean, presumably, it's a 415-pound fish or whatever. Yeah, that's true. What, what, was he, what was he doing down there? Did he, like, just get fired out of a fucking U-boat and, like... <laughs> just, like, like what's In a lake? <laughs> to, like, so I think we're lost. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you but, think we are so lost, why don't you go outside and check? Exactly. Go outside and ask him for directions. <laughs> just... <laughs> Herr Commandant, there's no there's no screen door on this on this on this there's no screen door on this submarine. We cannot roll down the window, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! This that's... is an undersea booted dumb cop. Just go out the top. <laughs> and, then, and then the one guy just like, what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> He's just oh, the intern. <laughs> Alright, welcome to Subject High, where we did Nazi impressions for a little bit. <laughs> I knew this was gonna be a good time. I knew, like, cause, like, cause you and I will just go off with fucking voices when we play yeah. Monster Hunter and shit, like, and it's always a good time. So, like, I knew this was gonna be insane. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that was that was the story of a really cool catfish that ate a Nazi. If if you have the opportunity, I suggest you do the same. As that fish. (laughs) Let's do the same as that fish. Emulate that fish. Let us all live in live in that live the example of that fish and go eat a fucking Nazi. Perfect. Excellent. Now, yes. Getting back to the actual questions after your fucking Buckwild story. Oh my god! Yes, please lay them on me. Um, you you've given us an uncool story of your involvement with the fandom where you had just an uncomfortable experience and this dude kind of stalked you to some of your shows but do you have a particularly cool experience that sticks out in your mind either as part of your as part of the pony bros or as part of the furries yes actually oh my god countless um hell yeah like honestly like i i I talk mad shit on bronies a lot uh because i feel like you know hey man i put in my dues i know exactly what i'm talking about but (laughs) (laughs) um um like, I have I have met some of the best people in my life currently because of the Bronies, both IRL and URL, like however you want to call it. Um, both IRL and URL. Yeah, like that's kind of what me and my friends call it. Like, like the 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 online bros that became real life bros, we call them the URL bros, and the IRL bros that we met through like pony meetups and stuff. Like that's those are the IRL homies. I gotta um, be real. I gotta be real with you. That's the most boomer shit I've ever heard. Is in my it life. really? <laughs> yeah. 
That sounds like something my fucking Gramps would say. God damn, the URL. Gramps doesn't even know what a fucking URL is. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, okay, Bloomer. <laughs> okay, oh God, no. <laughs> and, and we got a title. We I'm got only, a title for no, this No, Jesus Christ, that is not the title. The title needs to be like Nazi eating catfish or something. <laughs> <laughs> like that's Also good. C- consider consider our fan base. That's what's going to get the clicks, dude. <laughs> I don't want to clickbait people. <laughs> You, you have to in this economy. Put you on blast. <laughs> put me on B- Baja Blast. Yeah, I want to Baja Blast your ass. Oh my god. <laughs> that could be the title. <laughs> oh my, I'm going to Baja Blast your ass. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Right. Um, but yeah, no. Um, yeah, shit. Where, where, where were we? Fuck. <laughs> URL friends. Oh my god. Okay, yes. So, so basically... Um, shit, yeah, where was I? Um, yeah, so, so I remember like... There was like a very like pivotal moment in my in my life where I was basically like like I had already been a DJ for like five years uh, before I joined the fandom, but I didn't really make music. Um, but I remember watching like those first couple live streams of like the Pony Cons and just like listening to the music like that they made. Like it was just so fucking surreal to me, and I would I would look at like. I, I remember growing like, growing up, I'd always look at like Bass Hunter or like Dead Mouse or you know the Italo Brothers, um, just all like the crazy like old school techno guys, the old school house guys, and I would think to myself like, oh my god, that is so cool that they just kind of produce their own shit, um, but like, how do you get there? Like, there was no middle ground to there. Like, you know how like you always see like singer songwriters at like coffee shops, you know, and it's like, oh, they're gonna be like Jason Mraz one day or whatever, whoever the fuck was like popular at the time. But there was God, no. I haven't heard that name in forever. Right. I'm just kind of thinking back to the time. Like, like I've told this story for like ever. But um, basically, like looking at these these kids playing out their fucking dubstep at these pony cons, um, like as corny as it sounds, like there's something that clicked in my brain that was like, there it is. That's the that's the middle step in a way between me and Dead Mouse. You know, like they are doing it. And I can learn how to do that too and do it better and just continue to one up myself until I get to where I want to be. And so it was like from there, like I just went, dove in, started doing homework and like, you know, basically like got involved with the fandom just like full on, like, okay, like what is this about? Who's making music? You know, who can I be friends with? Who can teach me? Uh, What do I download? You know, just going, doing everything I could to just not only like, learn about music but also just kind of immerse myself in this fandom because it was always this you know little part that i had always felt that was like kind of sheltered you know or that i kind of kept closer to my heart that i could open up about you know the whole you know making a sona online like you know or you know interacting with you know these people and it, it was just there was just so many aspects of my life that i'd always wanted to incorporate into my life just coming together all at once and just kind of bronies <laughs> like that was it <laughs> and so it kind of started this whirlwind journey of like me producing like my first couple remixes my first you know couple albums um getting then like getting involved in the fandom early enough to be called out to play the conventions and one thing that kind of really stands out to me is i remember playing uh this convention out in minnesota it was like the first minnesota brony convention and that was the first time I'd met like Mike the Microphone, Living Tombstone, um, all of these crazy people that were like so insane in the pony music scene at the time. And like it was like a packed house and I was playing. Nobody had heard of me before, but like after I was done, everybody just kind of bum rushed me. Like all these people that were like literally on my like iPod at the time were coming up to congratulate me and go, oh, your music is so insane. What the fuck? Like you're crazy. You're going places, kid. And then like afterwards, like all the all the fans that were there to see them coming up to me and going like, yo, I came here to see Mike, but you're fucking insane. Like, oh my gosh. And then these like, the one thing that sticks out is like these two like kids, like they must've been like 10 years old and their mom came up to me and they're like, Hey, can we get a picture with you? And I was like, yeah, dude, totally. And like, they came up to me and they were like, they were like, yeah, like that was insane. Like I've never seen anything like that. Like I want to be like you when I grow up and that shit destroyed me. That that sentence does feel like just, whoa, it was 
fucking heavy and it didn't hit me at the time because i was still just kind of on this high but i remember like like flying home and like kind of relaying this to like my mom and my brother and i just started crying because it just it, it just felt so surreal that like i had become those people on the live stream for these kids you know and like i was already starting to kind of see the fruit of that labor you know and just all of the the happiness that you know these people brought me i was now at a point where i could give that back and hell yeah dude yeah it was it was so so surreal and like it, it, it's it's really weird to think about but yeah like i as as much as i have like a love hate re- relationship with the fandom at this point like just there's so many so many good years and so many good experiences in it like i i, I could never imagine taking anything back that's that's phenomenal i'm, I'm glad you've had I'm glad you've had so many good times to go alongside the sort of awkward times that you've had. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It makes it all worth it. It really does. It really does. Uh, let me start to think, because we have gone over one uh, one fun, awkward story. We've gone over uh, an emotional triumph, <laughs> and we have gone over uh how you got your start in both both art and music which is stuff that you do uh and just in general all the all, all of the all of the things yeah. so i'm sort of thinking of what what more is there what else do you do oh man um ch- shit uh yeah i don't know man like like i i i, I wasn't expecting to talk about uh, music as much during this podcast if i'm going to be completely honest oh well, um, you know for the obvious reasons we're keeping your we're keeping your musical alias off of this just because you know that that separation of church and state oh yeah no <laughs> I, I actually I, I noticed and i was like i i appreciate this because yeah it really it really is like you know something that like you know if people if people know people know but uh you know it, it's just not something that like i actively wanted ever wanted to promote with this account and still like don't um you know i guess i guess i could kind of talk about that but like you know like how i don't know you're the you're the host man what do you want me to talk about what do you want to know i'm gonna open uh, i don't know I'm, I'm sort of i'm sort of curious about what that what that calling it a double life is perhaps a bit of a stretch but <laughs> you know yeah balancing balancing a a professional uh a professional sort of identity alongside a horny identity how do you how do you how do you square that circle that's a good one actually um okay so this goes back like forever like this must have been like 2009 like when like i remember very vividly like kind of like lurking like google images and like finding out what vor even meant like i've always kind of knew that like from a very early age that like that was a thing that i was into but like when it's really started to kind of kick off um i actually was fucking terrified of my family finding out that this was a thing um you know it just just because it had always been like such a prevalent feeling forever like like even like even in like my like infancy like i remember like watching winnie the pooh and like feeling very uncomfortable when he got like when he ate too much honey and got stuck in the hole you know so it was like what the fuck is this feeling oh shit now this is what it is nobody can ever know um so i went like completely like doubled down like my earliest years were like specifically like from like the dsi web browser and like i would always clear the history uh brother you you have found a kindred spirit in uh people who use nintendo uh internet browsing cert, uh software to engage in their their sort of special brand of gross kink stuff oh my god yeah i i bet like what was it for you because i've heard I a used, lot i all right, this is interesting. I haven't really delved into it, but I, I mentioned it before, but I had sort of the opposite experience of knowing that I was into it from a very early age because I used to be fucking terrified of it. Really? My, like, it was it was a, I, I guess phobia. I guess phobia is an appropriate word for it. Whoa. But, yeah, way, way back when, uh, one of the earliest memories I have and my... My my parents could confirm with this is I remember reading like 
not reading, uh, watching the Digimon movie, if you remember the Digimon movie. Shit, not well enough, but go right. on. Uh, well, the first half of the Digimon movie is perfectly fine. I would even say good. Uh, but the second half is like an entirely separate movie, and it has a scene at the very end where like all, all of the main cast Digimon are eaten by the villain. Whoa, what? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the f- what? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go look that up now. I wanna see that. <laughs> no, not now. We're recording a podcast. No, 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 not now. <laughs> not now. I'm not Put a it fucking, away. I'm not a freak, but like... <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I, I, like that, is, that is a hobby of mine. I love just trolling fucking YouTube and like... I don't know what else. Like it's it's pretty much just exclusively YouTube, just for like old little smack rolls of vor goodies that like the animators of the eighties and nineties would just kind of chuck on a TV. Yeah, like, Bre- breadcrumbs of horny left by our predecessors. Exactly, like people who knew what was up before we did. Um, I fucking love that shit. Um, I like that is it is so strange how it's, so it's going back on topic. It scared you, like it just freaked you out. Oh, oh yeah, no, I my 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 I believe it was my mom told me the story of like she she remembered watching that movie with me when I was real little, and I uh, she like left the room to go do something while I was watching, and then just without knowing, I was just bursting into tears, inconsolably crying and panicking. Whoa, okay, uh, that's familiar. Actually, and, and that. Yeah, that that uh, that persisted through uh, up up until about adolescence when I got really into Sonic the Hedgehog at like age eleven, <laughs> as you do, as you do, as as everybody who is on the internet currently fucking did. Yeah, we all you can't hide it. You liked Sonic. You, you liked like Sonic. Sonic. Like, just stop being a cool boy. You liked fucking Sonic, listener. You um, like Sonic, don't you, listener? You like Sonic, don't you, Squidward? <laughs> Just like He'll go right to your thighs! <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh. Damn it! <laughs> oh, that sucks. It's fucking awful, dude. What you the hell? You the whole show. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Oh, that's All fucking right. funny. Okay, Navig- but yeah. Navigating around that conversation. <laughs> yeah, let's charge. just tip toe through that. Yeah, we'll tip through through those tor- tulips. Oh my god! But, uh, I I I was watching like fucking Sonic Adventure two tutorials on YouTube for doing whatever like weird glitch thing to get whatever. Yeah. And I in the recommended videos, somebody had as as this was a thing in the previous days of YouTube, and it might still be a thing. Somebody had uploaded like a a fucking Vor comic. Oh my god! <laughs> I know Just exactly like, what you're talking about. Yeah, set to like music and stuff, and I don't remember what it was, but I, I, just, I I've become so numb, I can feel you there, and then just like <laughs> fucking, just like this war comic going in the background, like yeah. Well, one of one of those things, and there's yeah. there's another sort of funny story about that that I will, I'll, I'll I'll go into now if you don't mind me hijacking your podcast to talk about my own weird experiences. Oh my god, no, this is fucking entertaining. Mm-hmm. Please but go I, on. Yeah. I, I wound up I wound up clicking on it because I was like, haha, that looks weird. What's this? And then I clicked on it and I got halfway through it before I had a panic attack existential crisis because it wasn't like a scene in a movie that somebody had been paid to make. This was fan art and I was oh. freaking out like, why? Who? What? Oh my god, that is fucking hilarious. And I, I proceeded to I proceeded to like next day on the school bus just have like a thousand yard stare <laughs> and i was i was completely out of it i was wigged out for a week i couldn't reconcile this oh and my god f- finally after that week was up I, I went back and i like sat down and i watched the full thing and i'm like surely that can't be what it is and i got to the very end of it and i was like i feel weird i don't exactly. feel scared i feel weird oh, oh hey my look my recommended videos has changed <laughs> Oh my god! So you like accidentally just stumbled into this shit? Yeah, I fell right down a rabbit hole, and that I, is you know, fucking nuts! Oh my god! Like the fact that that would even come up while you're looking up Sonic, it's just like, <laughs> dude, that's 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 God throwing you a softball right there. It's like, hey boy, yeah. check this out. <laughs> Look, my child, this weird horny nonsense is the key to your future. Look upon this now. Oh, you like that? I 
did that to you? Like, get some of this, my son. <laughs> Check that shit out. <laughs> and then There's just like, people on the internet drawing the round. <laughs> Damn, son, where'd you find that? <laughs> <laughs> fucking, oh my god, that is so funny. Okay, so fucking background. Um, it is really, really interesting how you your mom was like your mom left the room and then came to find you crying because i also had a very similar experience with like that winnie the pooh scene like oh, shit. i remember like growing up like i didn't really remember why but i was afraid of winnie the pooh and, <laughs> and my what are like, you xi jinping exactly i was like like my like my parents like really thankfully didn't look into it or what part of winnie the pooh scared me they kind of just said yeah like we turned on Winnie the Pooh one day and like you started fucking crying. But I remember the fucking honey in the tree scene and you know, his tubby ass not being able to fit through the hole and that making me feel weird. But like they always kind of thought it was the one episode of the heffalumps and woozles and like the fucking weird like <laughs> elephant, like polka dot people. Cause that's what scared my brother. And so they just kind of would always like think like, Oh, okay. Like that's, that's what scared him. Let's not make him watch Winnie the Pooh. But Going forward from that, I remembered, I remember very vividly, I liked seeing shit like that. Like if ever like a cartoon character got like fucking fat or like got eight or something. As um, they oftentimes as did. As they often do, because it's a really easy way to ha ha kill off the enemy. But like, uh, it was just like, I really like, I remember like, whoa, this feels weird. Like I got these butterflies in my tummy what the fuck? And I remember not enjoying it if there was other people in the room. If there was people looking at me, I it was like, I literally just was like, I want to go away. Like, I fucking hate this feeling. But like, <laughs> I would th- I would then like very curiously think back to it whenever like I was like alone and I'd be like, hmm, that's really cool. Why do I like that? You know? And it kind of like would like kind of culminate into like me like finding these like episodes of like cartoons like back like when fucking like direct tv first came out you could like see what the episode name was and when the next time it was gonna air it was like oh shit so and so got fucking fat in this episode i'm gonna look for this episode now whenever it's on or like um oh my god i remember like when fucking camp laszlo had that thing where it was like where's laszlo and like and then like the whole like all the promos were like oh no laszlo got eaten by a bear i was like oh man does that bear have a big tummy? I want to see that. Like, and I just like, and, and then like, it was just so fucking much. And it was all, I didn't know what it was. I didn't understand that this was a fucking thing. I was just like, Oh, this is some weird affinity that I have this weird interest. Let me like, just indulge this while nobody's looking and never speak of it ever. So like, like one thing I always bring up is those fucking, um, like waffle commercials where it's like the waffles. Oh like, my God. Yes. Yeah, like that shit. Well, like I remember that like was like, what the fuck? Like this is so fucking just, th- this is what makes this feeling like that is, that is what it is for some fucking reason. So I knew it was like when characters got fat and when characters got eight. So I was like, okay, c- code cracked. Now where the fuck is more of that? And so mm-hmm. that's kind of when it culminated like around like 2009, 2008, when I like got the DSI and it was, I was very like shamelessly, like just whenever I went to bed, just Googling fucking fat animal, you know, <laughs> like just like mm-hmm. fat cartoon animal, like just into the DSI web browser. And then that was kind of how I very, like very slowly started discovering this side of the internet where it that, was like, that is funny. It's so fucking funny. Like looking back, I was just this huge perv. Um, and then like, it would lead me to like finding like, um, like the, the artists that kind of come to mind are like, uh, uh, Tolstoy, the bear, um, Fitchell Vore's early stuff. Like were you know, some of the first things I found while like when I first found like FA, like I would specifically look up Wolf eats blank and like his first, like, fucking um i don't even remember what they're called but they were little pencil animations that he did with like sheila the wolf and you know like you know just those i remember stumbling upon and being like oh, what the fuck is this like i remember i remember uh i'm just kind of shouting out artists at this point because i feel like i i have to hey um, that's that's fair go go over your early influences hell yeah okay so we got fucking yeah we got tolstoy because he drew the big and the eats and that was tight we got fidgel and his early animations were what later inspired my animations. Um, we've got uh, Fenris Sulfir, 
who I actually just met this past uh, couple weekends ago at FC for the first time. Super oh, yeah, cool dude. dude. Yeah, super cool dude. Um, Kelvin the Lion, um, specifically because he did these, like, he was, like, really into, like, something else, but he did Vor sometimes. So, like, he had this, like, one um, character named, like, Jenna, Jenna the Kangaroo. And I was like, hell yeah, this chick is a bay. <laughs> I just, like, <laughs> really wanted him to draw more of Jenna. So I had this huge crush on that kangaroo. Um, uh, Dweet T. Dweet T was another one. Dweet T is very good. Dweet T is fucking badass. All, um, all these all these people are good. Oh, these people are just so good. And I love all of them. And they were basically, like, kind of what inspired me to just dive deeper into this, like, rabbit hole. Um, and I'm going to close out this story with, yes, I remember that thousand yard stare that I had to school the next morning. Because I promise you, no, not only did I not sleep that night. I would like literally come home and just fucking book it to my room and be like, yeah, I'm going to take a nap and just fucking just dive even deeper and just look at more shit before like passing out for like a couple hours before school the next day. And like, just, I couldn't get enough. I was just like, what the fuck? This is so validating. This feeling is real. There's other people that are doing it and feeling this. Hell yeah. I don't feel broken anymore, which was very cool. I mean, yeah, there's, there's something, there's something to be said about that sort of concept of like you, even if you have like a weird kink or what have you, it, it is normal. There's somebody else who has it and they probably have it, you know, like they're probably worse than you are. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know if I would use uh, the term worse. <laughs> no, worse, worse is, worse is not what I'm, was not what I'm necessarily oh, no, meaning to say. But absolutely. But. Like they're probably just as deep down the rabbit hole as you are basically. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, I get you. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I have I have those very early memories. Is I used to I I discovered what Vor was and my interest in it before I. Uh, this this speaks to how bad the sex education system in America is. I didn't know what to do with those feelings. I'm gonna try really? and keep this. I'm gonna try and keep it blue, and that's. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try and keep uh, it sort of on the DL about like. Oh, you, know, not, you don't not, you don't want, you don't want to be too graphic. Yeah, I know. But just mm. the, the I didn't know what the end goal of pornography was. And so I just remember that sort of like early period of adolescence, I would wake up early before school, which I used to do when I was in elementary school so that I could watch reruns of Gigantor the Space Age Robot at 6 a.m. <laughs> on Adult Swim. What I instead started doing was I started reading Vor fanfics on my Nintendo Wii browser at 6 a.m. before school <laughs> with a cup of coffee and a uh, pop boner. <laughs> fucking coffee? Yeah, I liked coffee back then. I still like coffee. Oh my god, that's so funny. I just imagine this like tiny adult going from like an upstanding citizen, like waking up at like 6 a.m. for a jog, but then he slowly just evolves into degeneracy, but the coffee persists and just like yeah. you're just there. Oh my god, that's so funny. I love that. Oh my god, yeah, I I guess I was like, I was like similar, like I really didn't know what I was doing either, I kind of would just do whatever felt good, like instinctually, which was like subsequently just like, I don't know, I don't know how fucking PG I want to keep it, but it was just basically just like humping the shit out of pillows and blankets, (laughs) and and like hoping that something would happen or this feeling would go away. And sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. I just didn't know what the fuck was happening. Um, so you were going at it like a horny dachshund. <laughs> absolutely. Like, oh my god. Oh, that does, okay. Oh my god. This does kind of dip into a really, really fucking embarrassing story. That you, is, don't, you don't have to share it if you don't oh no, want to. It, it's, it's so entertaining. I can't not. Um, right, please, please okay, share this. So, so that was basically like, it was. it's really weird. I don't know how I fucking learned this this early. But that was kind of something that I had always done as, like, a toddler. Like, Mm. I would just hump shit. Like, I would just, like, like, I, like, so you know how people would have, like, a carry around, like, a security blanket? Like, I would literally just, like, carry that around. And then whenever I fucking felt like it, I would just ball it up and just start, like, just lay on the (laughs) ground and just start humping the shit out of it. And, like, because my parents don't want to freak me out about it, they would call it cozy. Like they're like they'd be like oh he's just doing cozy, <laughs> and oh like, no, and that was just a fucking thing. And I'm like, guys, why didn't you fucking stop me? Like no, no, there were times where like they would stop me. Like we'd be in the middle of Sears and like. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and my mom would be like, oh, you fucking idiot, stop. But the worst, the worst time was, I must have been like three, okay? And there's a fucking like VHS video that exists somewhere that chronicles this, but I have, I have yet to find it and burn it. But my fucking, my fucking aunt was getting married. And like, I, yeah, this does not get better. Um, my aunt was getting married and like my parents were like in the pews, they were up on the altar and I kind of had my security blanket and I was just kind of like, I wanted to go run around or whatever. And so it was just kind of fucking off. Like kids don't like have any part in weddings unless you're like flower girl. So I was just kind of just like, just putzing around like in my little, you know, tux with like my dinosaur shirt underneath it oh um, yeah yeah exactly as you do when you're three and i remember like like going that, that's like, what i'm wearing to my wedding exactly like i'm fucking going out man going out in style um i don't know what that means but <laughs> <laughs> you know, the wedding where you die <laughs> the wedding where you die um so i remember like my like just kind of like walking down the aisle and people like oh he's so cute oh and then like i'm just kind of like smiling and waving at everybody and then i kind of get up to like ants Oh, can we? I'm gonna edit that out. I wasn't supposed to say your name. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, oh my god. Okay, so we get we get up to you know my aunt and her her husband to be, and I kind of just like look up at her and I look up at him, and then I start balling up the blanket, <laughs> and my parents like knew exactly what was about to happen and my fucking mom like jumps out of the aisle and like starts darting over to me like down the aisle and like thankfully like i didn't get any humps in thank god but like you just see my mom like pick me up and the blanket and just fucking dart back to her seat because she knew she knew it was about to happen and i i don't remember this and I don't know what I saw that must have caused it, but oh my god, like I was a little savage. Like what the fuck? Like like oh yeah, so you're doing a thing. Do you mind? Like just like I just I can't I can't it's so weird. It's so weird to think about. But yeah, that was basically what where I learned it and then that just kind of persisted into puberty where I was like, oh shit, this does things. That is such an incredibly buck wild story. I it love is it. So fucking weird, dude. <laughs> like just <laughs> I, I mean when you're when you're a little kid, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know. You just do what fucking feels right, man. You're like a little hippie. <laughs> <laughs> Three year olds in Outback Steakhouse follow the same principles. No exactly. rules, just right. No no rules, just right. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. That was We have just we've spent most of this podcast not asking you any questions, but more or less just telling stories. Yeah, yeah just shooting the shit. So this this is this is the first ever story time episode. I but, like it though. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've 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 been over we've been over the main ones, but you know. Yeah. I am uh, I am I am curious as to like what at this point you don't know about me that you would like to know or you would like, you know, I mean, I'm I, I've been I've been a fan of yours for a while, even before we met. I'd seen some of your stuff, and I was like, "Damn, this dude's impressive." Oh, damn! Thank you. Yeah. That, Jesus Christ! What a fucking compliment, God! Yeah. Like, um, I had always thought like that you you had kind of like like just looked into my stuff afterwards because I remember I remember seeing your like earliest stuff around like on Tumblr, oh. Oh, and I was no. like, "Damn, this guy's fucking awesome!" Like, and just like, but like I didn't know it like went both ways. Yeah, I, I I had a period where I lurked for a long time before I started doing anything. Mm, same. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to drag this out too long and get too into it. But I before before I started drawing, I attempted to do a creative project of my own. Oh, I was gonna I was gonna make a game, and I was I had teamed up with an artist and everything, and I was doing a Kickstarter that would have been successful, but uh, there were definitely some problems that I could see down the road in the production of that. Uh, mostly being that I was in college still and I had no fucking clue how to make a game. And so Ooh, I, tor- yeah. I I torpedoed that, uh, that, what's the word? That Kickstarter. That pro- oh yeah, just fucking, let's, let's mm. not, let's not yeah. go through with this and let's not skewer my entire being on the internet by raising mm. money for a thing that is to never come. Yeah, because the last thing that I wanted to do was take money and then not deliver a satisfactory product. Oh, absolutely. God, like that that's actually like that actually segues pretty nicely to why I don't fucking animate anymore. Like where like why do like 
<laughs> oh my god, dude! Like it, it is. It is definitely better because, like, it, can we? Can we? Like, hold on. I kind of want to talk about that. I kind of want to talk about like the whole like animation on Tumblr thing because you found me via the animations on Tumblr, correct? Yes. Okay. Then that. Yeah, that makes sense. So like, I I didn't really understand. Like I'm like I'm gonna hijack. Is that cool? No, yeah, or, definitely or, go for or, it. Did, okay, cool. Okay, it's your, so, it's your episode, bro. I've got like eight of these now. <laughs> okay, for sure. Um, yeah, basically, like I I remember like Tumblr was kind of like that middle ground between me and like me lurking and me producing content because I was the same way. Like I really starting out, like I did not want to be well known at all in this in this realm of the internet. Like, I kind of wanted to just be, like, silently watching. I didn't really commission art. I was just some really cool dude in the Skype rooms and then subsequently the Discord rooms. I really was just, like, a no pony who RP'd. <laughs> like, that was it. Um, so when I remember, like, specifically, like, one night, I was, like, talking with, like, a really longtime friend. And we were just kind of bouncing back ideas back and forth. And at the time, I had, like, stumbled upon my DS and like found out that Flipnote 3D was a thing. And I was like, well, I'm going to download this and try to rekindle some old animation flames. And so we basically like, as you do, just kind of started teasing each other back and forth. And then basically like, as that was going on, I was like drawing things like on my DS in the background. And they kind of like, and I was like, shit, I can make these move. And then basically that was what happened and that was kind of how those first couple animations came up. And then I was like, oh, wait, uh, I'm going to like, I really can't send these to him. Like, I'm probably just going to put it on Tumblr and then just kind of throw them at him like via a link. Like, nobody's going to see this. And like, I kind of like put the tags because I was like, OK, well, you know, like it was like the tags were specifically so that way I could then find them later in my blog because like I reblogged like a lot of art and like talked a lot and on my fucking Tumblr just about stuff that I was into. And so basically it was just like, oh, you know, if I click this tag, uh, it'll it'll bring up all of the animations that I've done on my on my Tumblr. And that was really the point. And I really didn't understand that that posted to the tags on Tumblr as a whole. Like that was how you got it out to audiences. All right. And I, I, I learned how Tumblr worked very quickly because as crude as those animations were they they were they were kind of long and p people enjoyed them a lot and i remember like two weeks after i posted one uh like one of the first ones like i got a fucking blip on my phone and it was like congratulations you were you were one of the trending posts in hashtag furry this week and i was like um what <laughs> like and i just it i it never dawned on me that these things were getting notes i'd never even like like i i i didn't like it didn't like go back and check i would just kind of see the notifications roll in you know and then it like it would just i would just kind of like go in look at them go oh that's kind of cool and then kind of fuck off because i didn't have any of the notifications turned on specifically because i didn't want them coming up on my phone like at school or when i was with my family or something so i just didn't know like that yeah this was going on in the background. And so it was kind of that point where it like went from me ghosting everything to like kind of gathering this like pedigree of like, Oh, he's the dude that does those Tumblr flip note animations. And it was kind of at that point where I was like, Oh man, this isn't just something that I do for me anymore. This is something that people want me to one up. Like this is something that people want to see more of. And then I kind of kept trying to like one up, get better, post more. Uh, and I posted probably about like three or f like, like probably about three after that. And it wasn't until I took, I started taking on commissions because people wanted them that I realized how in over my head I was. Um, and I had some pretty bad experiences with taking on commissions. Um, the first one just being like this super, super rude dude. Um, and I, f I fucking hate that that dude was my first commission because he just kind of got to me first and like, you know, was like, oh, I'll pay you this. And I'm like, shit, I'm behind on bills. Sure. Um, but like he was like, he, like basically like what happened was I was I was animating his thing. I was sending him works in progress. He was real. He was real happy with it until basically like I, I didn't realize that 
my DS wasn't plugged in and it ended up dying on first draft and it was like almost done and like I ended up losing like pretty much everything on the project and I had to tell him and he from then on he was fucking pissed like he was so just like are you kidding me like and he's like I'm paying you this much and you did that like what the fuck like it was bad all right asshole oh yeah dude he was so crazy and he didn't even pay me yet like, like he did not give me the payment yet, and he was just so mean. Um, and I was like, "Oh, dude, like I'm, I'm super sorry. Like, you know, I can make it up to you. Just give me a couple more days." Because another thing about all of my animations is that they were all done in one night, like one way or another. Like, I would stay up as late as I needed to to finish the animation because it was like, okay, like either my parents are out of the house tonight, or you know, they're they're sleeping in in the other room, or you know or what have you and we're like i'm like i'm feeling awake enough tonight to where i could stay up and finish this all in one shot because in my head i was like okay like i don't know when i'm gonna get another chance to just be a vegetable the next day and you know be able to kind of reset my sleep schedule after working on these animations because i would do the the sketch layer i would do the lining if i if there was lining i would even do the audio like literally like all in the same night in one shot like working like eight to nine hours at a time to just very crudely finish this and get it out. So the fact that I had lost so much of this stuff that night, at that point where my DS died and I had to message him, hey man, I'm gonna need to go a couple more days just to finish this. Like it was because it was like 5 a.m. And I'm like, holy crap. Like I, I, I can't put another five hours into this. Like my family's gonna wake up and like, you know, demand me come alive. And, and so that, that's another reason why it's very hard because I'm like constantly trying to keep it away from my parents. Like, I don't want them to know that I do this obviously, but like, it's kind of evolved into this really fucked up situation where they don't even know that I draw. Like, (laughs) like they don't, they just don't know. Like I, like I, I remember like doing like the fucking, uh, four animations on my DS. And then one day I got my DS taken away and like I was so afraid that they would find those animations that I just like as soon as I got it back I deleted all of them and like never let them see me animate again because I just wanted to get them off of my trail you know like the the trail as if I'm fucking some criminal um but yeah so that's that's why like that's why it's so hard because like after I finished his animation um it was basically like my first couple semesters like really going back into school and I was like always having to be on during the day and being like not a zombie so the animations kind of took a lot longer i couldn't just stay up and do them um and like i had one for uh one of our friends lucario that took fucking months to finish just because like i had to work on it in like little spurts and then kind of like came the time where like i was feeling like really self-conscious about what my work looked like because it's not it's no longer for me it's for them it's now a product it's not just something that i'm doing to indulge you know, and that was really what hurt my creative muse was like, you know, I am now having to deliver a product for somebody else that needs to be good. And so his took a lot longer because of that, because I was like constantly just restarting, 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 because it was like, no, this isn't right. This isn't good. I could do better. Um, I also realized how challenging it was to like draw something something that somebody else is like asking you to like he wanted me to do like four-legged things and i'm like i've never fucking done that i've always kind of cheated and made everything on two legs um you know people wanted me to do like micro stuff and i like i don't really dig micro stuff and then like you know um it kind of all culminated together on a commission for a, like a good buddy of mine i think you might know him like anton the shadow uh, I'm not familiar. Okay, so like R- Ruby, Ruby and I are are familiar with him, but he is he is the biggest sweetheart I've ever met in my life. Like he's literally like one of my better friends on this side of the internet. Uh, and I'm I'm just gonna be upfront. Like he's he paid me for an absolutely massive commission. Like I'm it, it, like it's it, it's easily like on par with some of my longest works, and like he paid me upfront for it um, when he really didn't have to. You know, like I, I just kind of told, like I, I kind of let it slide in, um, in in a conversation one time. I was like, yeah, like I'm really short on bills this month. Like I don't know if I'm gonna make it. And he'd always wanted to commission me, and so he's like, oh well, I want this and I want this and I want this. Like according to your current prices that you told me, it should equal this. I'm just gonna send this to you. Here you go. Um, and so he sent me the money to like not only like 
basically like sealed the deal on his commission that I was going to do it, but also to help me out. And I was like, oh my God, like you're insane. Like I will absolutely do this for you. And I remember like, like that, those like next couple of days, like I started like trying to do it. And I started realizing all of these shortcomings in my own personal artistic ability. And I was like, oh my God, like I, I, I can't give him this. And so like, I, I, I never even like sent him like the work in progress. I was just like, you know, dude, like it's going to take a couple more days. Like, don't even worry about it. Um, like I, I will get to this and then like school happened even more. And I said, you know, don't worry, like I'll get to this. And then I kind of tried redoing it again and it still wasn't up to par and I didn't have the time with school to kind of go back and redo it. I probably like have made this commission like a good, like two or three times over on the DS and Damn. in, yeah, just because like, I just like, dude, like, holy crap, like you helped me out so much. Like I want to give you a product that you are proud of. Um, I even like, even at one point I like, it, cause this has gone on. Like, I think I'm on like probably like year two now that this has gone on and I've like offered him refunds several times, but he's just like, no dude, like, you know, uh, you know, like, I, 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 I believe in your vision and I believe in your skill. Like I want to see what you do. Um, and we've had several talks about it. I am very much not the artist that's just going to take the money and run, um, but he, he really is just kind of waiting on me to fucking finish college so I can finally like sit down and finish this commission for him. And thankfully it's definitely at a better part than it was. Like I am literally almost done. I'm like two scenes away because I downloaded a Sprite. I got a bigger, you know, like basically like, like I got a surface, uh, a surface pro, Hell yeah. um, with some money that I saved up from work. And I was like, okay, like I'm not playing around this time. I'm going to fucking do this for you. And so it's it's been a long time coming, but it's finally becoming the thing that I, I I can give him that you know not only he enjoys, but I'm also proud of considering my skill level. Um, so so yeah, so it's not like I've just completely dipped out on it, but that is like my last commission, and I and before I I basically feel free to work on other things because that's another thing. It's like I I never wanted to like animate personal projects while commissions are going on. Even if it that does, sense. yeah. Even if it does, like, get me back into the groove of animating. So it, like, it kind of sucks that I have this like thing sitting here waiting for me to animate, and like, it's just not getting used because I'm like, mm, I have this thing that I really need to get done, and so I'm kind of just like holding that over my head, and like, it's been like really kind of stressful, but like, you know, it, I, I really, I, I think in the end it's gonna pay off. Like, I, I really, I really do kind of feel bad about it. So like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm even gonna leave his name in, but like, if you're listening. You know who you are. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate your patience. Um, and I, I really want everybody else to see it too, because it's it's really, really good. Yeah. Um yeah. But yeah, that's that's pretty much that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's a good I think that's a good sort of final segment. And if you are listening and you're not the guy who's uh commissioned this animation, I want you to just start speculating wildly about how good it is. Just get oh, so hyped no. up in your oh, mind. Oh right no, now. oh it's never getting made now. <laughs> 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 all right um, i want you to do the opposite i want you to just forget the past forget 15 this. minutes i shouldn't have said that you know, uh just un unthink the podcast <laughs> just unthink this entire thing no it'll it'll be good but it'll be it'll be done when it's done oh my god yeah, like no I'm, I'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest like this this semester I, like i will i will leave basically everybody with this like this this semester I, like i specifically took on a lighter workload to kind of like reset my life in a way because like oh, I've been yeah. taking like 18 plus units every single semester for the past two years. Jesus. It just because I want out, I want my life back. Like I need this degree <laughs> so I can just be a person again. So I, I, I did this specifically so I could have a really easy semester. I'm taking like maybe like, I think 10, nine or 10 units. Like it's a really easy workload. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to use this, start animating again. I'm going to start making music again. I have, I actually have an idea for like an alias. That's basically going to bridge the gap between Ooh. my, my alias and this. So like I, I've been writing music for it and I've had, I've been having a really fun time. So like basically like, you know, yeah, just, I'm going to make a music alias and I'm going to, that I can promote with this account, basically. Hell and yeah. I'm actually really, really fucking stoked on, on everything that's happening this semester specifically. So 
I'm not a scumbag is basically what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think anybody thinks you're a scumbag, but I think I think I'm I'm very excited to see what you do, dude. Everybody loves what you're everybody loves your whole sh- your whole steez. My whole shtick. Thank you. Thank, it, it really does mean a lot because it's like you, I, I respect you and like Ruby and like all, all of these like people that have kind of come through my Twitter you know, just share these kind words about stuff. And it, it like, it's, it's nuts because I've just kind of lurked and followed all of you guys for so long and like seeing it kind of come back and the, the feelings to be mutual is just, it's, it's insane. Like it's cloud nine. Like I fucking love you guys. And you know, I can't wait to see what you guys do. And so sometimes, you know, yeah, it's fucking Aww. cool. Yeah. I love you guys. We love you too. Oh, Oh, shucks. Oh, heck. <laughs> Oh heck! Oh gosh! Oh shucks! Oh 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 bull! Oh bull! Oh bull! Oh, oh, oh sklounce! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that I think that I'm going to drax the sklounce of this podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God. You, yes. You have been listening to episode. I actually don't know the episode. Oh, my hand! <laughs> I bumped it on my desk. Oh my god. <laughs> it's okay, I'll edit that out. I'll, no. I'll put it I'll put in some other noise. <laughs> Do a cartoon bonk. <laughs> oh my god, the bonk. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Uh you you've been you've been listening to Subject High, the only podcast on the internet with the guests who do. do, 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 do. This episode is going to be called Blue Kaloof Rises. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Blue Kaloof. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? A fucking baby? A <laughs> What is that? I love that. No, we're keeping that. That's fucking great. Blue Kaloof oh. Rises. Alright, and I hope you have a great day. Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> oh yeah, the fucking don't don't forget to follow people on Twitter. This oh, is yeah. all this this is all falling to shit. <laughs> this is all falling to shit. Like follow uh-huh. follow what's your fucking Twitter? Um, at Hookie Loof because at Hookah Loof was taken. Oh, true. Okay, so you're at Hookah Hookie Loof. Is it Hookie underscore Loof? No, no, just all one word. H O O K I E L O O F. Oh my God. Okay, so at Hookie Loof, and then I'm at Huckleberry Blue. No space. That's that's pretty much it. Like that's that's like that's all I'm. That everything I do on the internet comes through my Twitter and I assume you as well. So just go fucking follow us there. Yeah, go please. Go fucking go fucking follow it, dumb shit. <laughs> go fucking follow it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. I'd like to thank my editor, you <laughs> for, oh my for, god. Hand, for handling <laughs> this this hot pile of nonsense. Oh my god. No, this was so much fun. I've actually been looking forward to doing this like for like ever since you started it. Like this is so much fun. Oh hell yeah. Hell yeah. Alright. Uh okay. but that's uh, that's all I've got. Everyone's that's been promoted. Uh do you have do you have any sort of shout outs that you want to do to anybody or plug any sort of thing that you haven't uh, already plugged? Oh my god, actually, shit. Yes. Um I first and foremost have to shout out uh at Mama Mulberry, my girlfriend, on Twitter, or she at Twitter. She's Mama Mulberry, but Mulberry <laughs> Tart. She's my she's my better half, and without her, I would be nothing. I fucking love her to death. Um, like I, I oh, and fucking follow her. Go go subscribe to her Patreon, please, because we're trying to move out, and that would help massively. <laughs> like, um, uh, we're gonna do. Wow, I realized that that swallow probably got picked up hella um hot <laughs> shit um so yeah so so go please go subscribe to our patreon please go look at your stuff we're gonna collaborate soon we're gonna make a comic uh that should be coming out sometime in the next uh month or so and I've it's really good to the premise it's real good oh yeah no it's it uh, we're so fucking excited for it so like please like if you want all of the info as soon as stuff starts hitting the ground running please go subscribe to that patreon um you know and yeah we are we really we really hope that you guys are gonna like it and not disappoint um and yeah that that's that's pretty much it and just you know of course you for having me and ruby snoot and um you know all the all the good boys and girls on twitter who be in my mentions and dms and shit like fucking love you you're so good god damn but yes that is that is pretty much it all right 
Uh, then I'm going to read the end title card again. And I, I, when you're editing this, you better not take out the first one. I won't. I will not. I promise. <laughs> this this has been... We're, we're actually doing it right now. It's really late for me right now, and I'm sleepy. I was asleep before we started recording, so I've been not very good this episode, and I'm sorry, but that's I'm okay, because you carried it on your, your little horse back. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, but this has been Subject High, the only podcast on the internet with the guests who do. do, do, do. <laughs> And I hope you have a great day. <laughs> oh my god.